Holy smokes, I'm no joke out the bullpen. Bringing nothing but heat, leave you hanging like clothespins. He's a beast when he goes in, ice cold frozen. The first round draft pick, number one chosen. Drop bombs, explosion, self promotion. Hey guys, it's Mitch. I'm here with Darian today. Uh, we got a 2022 TRX behind us here that we're doing a full wrap on. This is blue now. It's going to be a uh, matte metallic pine green. That's a 3M color. We're doing a full color change wrap on it. Uh, we got the doors off now because we're going to be doing a one piece door jam in there and showing you guys how we do that. And now uh, let's get to it. You got enough back there? Cool. No, that should be good. I'm just feeling up here. Just make sure all the vinyl has enough to go over this A pillar. One common mistake is you may get too far ahead of yourself and whenever you're you know pushing all of this in and everything you could leave an airline here right on the the pinch you know as you're working up and you may not realize it but that's gonna be a headache trying to trying to fix it later down the road you want to make sure that as you're going before you go to the next you know next body line up that you're satisfied and it's it's down there's nothing no blemishes or, or any bubbles that don't belong there so this is one of those things you just gotta take your time, it's really important. I would say these jams are a little easier in the sense that they do have aggressive areas and really deep recess areas, but um, it's all pretty much, they're all next to each other. There's not a whole lot of levels that are far away. Uh, we did another, we did a, a set of jams on a Corvette C8, the new Corvettes, and um, on those cars, I mean, you have a, a three inch level and then it goes in another three inches and it goes back up. That would be really hard to work in one piece. It's doable, um, but just a harder jam. Whereas on here, you know, especially with the doors off, um, it's, all, it's all fairly, fairly uh, reasonably easy to do. this whole perimeter done I'm just gonna do this face here and then all that's left is the deep recessed areas that, uh, that I'm gonna need Mitch's help on I think a common mistake in this at this point in time is you get a little over ambitious whenever you're cutting off extra material and you you don't leave yourself enough and all the stretch is coming from a real small area so there's like a really a perfect amount to have here you don't want to have too much you don't have too little so uh, that's basically what we're we're trying to narrow down here all right so now we're gonna work on the more uh, recessed areas of this uh, jam um, we'll pretty much be working together I'm just gonna be feeding in the film and heating it up for him so he can come behind me and squeeze you down makes it a little bit easier when you have two guys doing it and we don't mind using the extra guy just we just want the work to look as you know the best it could so uh right now i'm just starting by heating the middle i want to try to get as much heat in the middle as i can and not put heat directly on the corner so all the stretch comes from the middle section here we feel like it's best to not work it slowly and a little bit at a time just because you're going to get glue lines the entire way in if you do it if you do this with one person it, it's, it's probably a little easier to just work it nice and slow uh, when you have that extra set of hands it definitely helps to try to get a clean look Instead of moving it all down and potentially pushing more tension this way, we're going to kind of go out from that point to minimize uh, all the tension that's already there. The last few little bits of the door jams and then uh, we'll assess assess what we're looking at see if we have any any bubbles or anything we need to take care of the idea now is gonna be that we got our jam done to give it all a good posy um, and then we're not gonna be trimming anything yet we're gonna wait till tomorrow morning to go back and give it a second uh, round of post heating our goal here is to not have the stuff fail there's you know there's a good amount that this film had to mold around uh, a lot of curves so uh, just trying to make it lose its memory so we'll do two rounds of post heating we'll do the first round we'll try to get it to about 130 140 degrees and then tomorrow morning when we come in we'll try to do uh, another 130 140 degrees if you didn't post heat um, you will have bubbles popping up all over the place in a matter of weeks I mean, you have the film is going to want to come back to its general shape it's not going to want to lose its memory without any heat we're not
not going to cut any of this excess off today. The reason we're going to do that or not do that is because if we do get a bubble in the morning somewhere, we want to use this excess to be able to lift the film back up and lay that bubble down. Um, we don't like to poke any holes in the film or anything like that because if there's already a lot of stress in one area and you poke that hole, that hole can expand. So we'll leave the excess film in here until the morning. And then after we do a second post heating round, then we'll go back and trim everything up. Right on the money, 130. 129, yep. You can expect three years, four years, five years, especially if you take care of it. But the goal here is to get it to last that long. That's why you want to post heat it, make sure it's all good, and then tomorrow we're going to come back, like Mitch was saying, and do a second post heat. Now that the jams are uh, fully completed up to the edge and post heated, uh, we're just going to let them chill for a little bit. Uh, we're going to go back and post heat tomorrow morning. We just want to let them uh, kind of do their thing, and if any problems are going to come up between now and the morning, we don't want to cut this extra vinyl back in case we have to pick it up and, and get some of those bubbles out of there. So we're just not going to touch that for now, but I do have to work the outside perimeter. i got to work this uh, back pillar in here a little bit, uh, so we're just going to be going over some of that stuff. I'm just cutting this back so I have a more manageable amount of material here. The setup I have here is I put an inlay here so that once we wrap this whole piece, I can uh, end it right where the knifeless is so that there's not too many fingers, too much tension. It'll look clean and the seam is facing away and it's hidden. So uh, it's basically just an all around cleaner way of doing it uh, with you know as little tension, as little headache as possible. Cause this is, this is known for being a challenging area. It's the next day after we just finished up the door jams, I went through and did the second post heat just to make sure everything is all down. Everything's good to go. It may look like, you know, this was quick and easy, but you know, this is gonna be a 30 plus hour job and just the door jams alone. That was a couple days of work right there. You know, a little camera magic makes it look like it's fast, but slow and steady is how we get the quality where we want it to be. Today, we're gonna be tackling this bedside. I just have to finish up a couple of the inlays and throw some knifeless in there, uh, but we should be good to go. Just prep it a little bit, make sure all the edges are good to go. So let's hop into it. Next up, we're just gonna double check all our edges and everything and make sure that there's gonna be no contaminants where we don't want them. We want all the edges to stay, stay put and make sure it's all good. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, dry hang it up here, and I'm gonna cut the extra off so we could use it for whatever else. We just want to minimize waste. Just getting this glassed out here, making sure it meets the corner, and then I'm gonna just squeegee out the face and then work the edges. Whenever you are glassing a panel, you are getting it to, uh, where it looks like you've already squeegeed it down. You're pulling all the tension out from every direction. So there's no slack, there's no possible creases or wrinkles that you would have to deal with. It's uh, basically for a really clean install, uh, the least problems that you could have, you just wanna glass it out so it's clean and ready to go. Going slow and steady, just trying to be thorough, make sure that I'm not getting ahead of myself. You know, everything in here, if you get too impatient, you know, you cause some bubbles or wrinkles, then reaching all the way back in there to pick it back up, you could get contamination from your fingers. It's just, you know, all perfectly glassed out. We don't want to undo anything that we've already done. So we're just going to take it nice and easy. the stretch around this corner and get it hooked around here. This is where a lot of the stretch is going to end up. So if you can get it hooked, then whenever you post seat it, it's going to bite down to this corner and it's going to have less of a chance of failure. So it actually 
actually took the uh, fuel door off here so that I could have extra here to tuck in here. And then also I'll be able to do this and tuck extra behind here so there's less chance of failure. And you also get a cleaner finish. So just a little, you know, small detail, but you know, some people might leave the fuel door on, but if you want to get the, uh, the extra quality finish, you gotta take that off. I'll cut a little bit further in and uh, I'm actually gonna be tucking into a rubber seal that's right here. And so I'll just use some scrap, like the scrap that we cut here or something, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll use it to do that piece right now. pulled right here. We had an inlay laid right here and so I got up to the knifeless edge and now I'm just gonna uh, just break it through. through. Cut on this trim above the, uh, the bedside. It's important to make sure your angle of your knife is tilted away. If you keep it too parallel you're actually limiting the amount of material that you have. So if you tilt it away when you make this cut it's leaving extra so that you can tuck it in there and you can make sure you're not showing any body color. Got this front edge and then all we have to do is tuck the, uh, the fuel door area. Bedside's done. Holy smokes, I'm no joke out the bullpen. Bringing nothing but heat, leave you hanging like clothespins. He's a beast when he goes in. Ice cold frozen. The first round draft pick, number one chosen. Drop Bombs explosion, I'm self promotion, and I keep shit moving like a flanker in motion. I'm the number one spokesman, is my devotion that I'm dedicated to the rhyme, is my.